Hi everyone, this is Paul here for the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the series retrograde, which begins on the 8th of April and finishes on the 17th of July. And I'll be outlining some of the key themes and lessons that this particular retrograde highlights to us and giving an overview of what it all means. Before I do that, I just want to clarify as always to do that the astrology doesn't control our lives, it gives us a framework to help us understand what is unfolding around us, it helps us to recognise what lessons are there for us to be learning from this point in time. But from there it's up to each and every one of us to take responsibility for how we apply the lessons, to take responsibility for our actions and to seek out the opportunities presenting to us in order to maximise our growth because without our participation we don't make the most of the kind of lessons available for us at this time. Now, in terms of Ceres retrograde, for those of you not familiar with Ceres, she's one of four goddess asteroids orbiting between Mars and Jupiter, the other three being Pallas Athena, Vesta and Juno. Now, Ceres specifically deals with, uh, she's the prime, deals with nurturing, so it's the relationship with the mother, as it were, in terms of the nurturing side of it and um, also deals with kind of like parent-child relationships, our capacity to nurture one another and also our capacity to share our resources. Now Ceres is um, quite complex and in terms of whereas the main planets that we know of usually just rule one sign, Ceres is linked with four signs i.e. Um, Taurus and Scorpio polarity and also Cancer, the Universal Mother and, Ver and Virgo, sorry, the Virgin, which is all about the productivity side of Ceres. But some of the key things that may come up for us is our ability to nurture ourselves. So when Ceres is retrograde, it's about learning to murder ourselves, if you like, or the capacity to nurture ourselves rather than relying on nurturing from elsewhere. And it also deals with our relationship with the different facets of nurturing, whether it be our capacity to give and receive unconditional love, which is usually something that we you know, should ideally learn from our relationship with um, our mother or the primary nurturer in our lives. So if we didn't have that kind of unconditional love, then we may find that this retrograde brings up areas where we struggle to feel worthy of love or where our self-esteem um, or self-worth has been impacted by a lack of nurturing as it were but this get, then gives us the opportunity to heal that, those wounds or heal that lack of nurturing through learning to nurture ourselves it's also, Sarah's being related to you know, cancer also deals with our relationship with food so um, what is our relationship with food, do we see it as something that is nourishing us and gives us necessary fuel for our bodies in order to maximise its functioning and we associate food with a form of nurture, loving nurturing or do we have certain complexes around food for example things like anorexia or bulimia where food yeah, our relationship with it is conditional so either we struggle to embrace food or accept food or we gorge on it and then try and purge it out of our system as well because we don't have a healthy relationship with nurturing we struggle to receive nurturing from other people or give it and this can also lead to complexes within relationships so our ability to receive nurturing from other people or give it so our relationship with nurturing or our capacity to nurture ourselves or is likely to come into the spotlight here Sarah's also deals with the ability to, to learn attachment and separation so the ability to let go of things because whenever we have intense attachments to things the key lesson is non-attachment so one of the key elements that we have to learn to embrace with series is our capacity to let go of the things that we create and it's also our capacity to let go of relationships when need be so it's our ability to accept the fact that in order for us something to in order for us to accept or embrace rebirth or for anything to renew in our lives we have to be able to let go of it in order for that renewal um, to happen so for any kind of rebirth to happen in our lives we first must be willing to allow something to die to allow bonds to break as it were and to let go of our attachment to the things we um, nurture whether it be relationships creative projects for people who have them you know, it could be children it's our ability to let go of our you know, creations and accept that 
we may have played a role in creating them but they it's not ours to own it's not ours to possess so it's overcoming possessiveness and it's also learning to share what we have with other people and if we feel a significant a substantial sense of self-worth and self-validation and self-esteem then it's also our ability to celebrate other people's achievements to celebrate other people's creative projects and to celebrate you know, in them as though they're our own so it's that capacity to share it's the ability to celebrate other people's achievements and our capacity to nurture each other to receive nurturing as well as give it because if we can't nurture ourselves how can we nurture other people now with all this taking place in Sagittarius this you know, key areas that we're looking at nurturing is things like our belief systems and our capacity to expand our horizons to expand our perceptions through pushing the boundaries of our mental and physical horizons it's that belief that like there's a fundamental meaning to life that we have a purpose or our own lives have the sense of meaning and purpose so that we don't um, end up suffering from apathy um, or a sense of meaningless in our lives which leads to nihilistic pursuits is that capacity to have faith in the expansion of consciousness and that um, force that propels us forwards which is driven by a sense of meaning and a belief system that allows us to grow that fosters that belief that we can grow in consciousness we can expand our mental and physical and spiritual horizons we can nurture the people's capacity to believe in themselves but for that to happen we have to have that within ourselves as well so with it being in Sagittarius one thing we need to be looking at is our belief systems especially the beliefs we hold about ourselves do we believe that we're worthy of love do we believe um, that we're worthy of receiving nurturing off for the people do we believe that we have the capacity to grow that um, we um, have um, that our minds are capable of expanding beyond the current level or do we fear have fears that we're stupid that we're not very good that we're um, not sharp enough or not intelligent enough to grow because thing is it's the belief that locks in that position it's not the lack of potential it's not the lack of capacity to grow it's the beliefs that handicap us because our beliefs color our perceptions so it's one of the things to look at is what is our perception of ourselves when we look in the mirror what do we see or who do we see and when it comes to our capacity to do anything what is our perception of our ability to work on something or our ability to cultivate self-reliance rather than be get, becoming dependent on other people in relationships becoming reliant on other people's support in order to do something one of the key things that the Virgo element of Ceres deals with is that capacity for self-reliance that capacity to nurture ourselves and put the right fuel in our bodies put the right fuel in our minds that allows us to achieve um, that capacity to provide for ourselves and provide for other people as well as nurture ourselves and nurture other people so if we have a negative belief system or negative perception of ourselves it will stop us even if all the evidence in our lives suggests to the contrary that actually we are capable of doing it if we believe we're not we fail to see um, our capacity to grow and life seems like we're drifting in sense of meaninglessness so we have to overcome any tendencies to hold on to old um, experiences old beliefs old relationships and if the primary relationships that should have nurtured us in the past were very conditional or led to complex relationships around food around our sense of self-esteem and what we're capable of about our intelligence about our capacity to nurture ourselves and stand on our own true feet because with Sarah's the point of that nurturing is to achieve that foster that degree of self-love that enables us to then in get encounter or to engage in more complex relationships which is a Scorpio element so the ability to successfully navigate one-on-one -on -one relationships with people outside of immediate family and from there to ultimately have that ability to love 
have that loving and compassionate nurturing for all of humanity but it starts with that those primary relationships um, so that initially could be the relationship with the um, primary nurturing parent usually it's the mother but not exclusively so and if this is a relationship that didn't foster that ability to nurture ourselves this is a time to go back over these issues and to heal it to be that mother for ourselves as well to connect with the archetypal mother rather than relying on the human or physical mother who they for whatever reason the lack of nurturing may not be because the person didn't love us but they may not have known how to nurture us and may not have known how to love us properly so it's not about judging um, the people we should have nurtured ourselves it's not about holding past against them hold, holding lack of forgiveness forgiveness and compassion are key elements out of these complexes it's learning to forgive where we hold grudges and to learn to nurture ourselves and if we have com complicated relationship with food so we struggle to nurture ourselves it could be about transforming the, our beliefs around food as to what it means to us and instead learn to listen to the innate wisdom of the body so if we're someone who tends to overeat um, or, or use that as a way to shield ourselves it's instead listen to the body and see when is it telling us that we're full and then at that point say right don't need any more or if we try and starve us if we've been living in a tendency to starve ourselves and instead learn to see foods as a means to nurture ourselves rather than as a means of punishing ourselves and overcome these tendencies in terms of the relationships it's um, learning to let go of any that no longer serve us or are no longer relevant for who we are so it's letting the other person go rather than cling to other people out of a sense of dependency and it's learning to because it's when we allow other people to let go that we allow for personal renewal and rebirth in our own lives it could be that the relationship doesn't necessarily die but it's given that freedom to transform and release both parties from it so it's overcoming attachment in relationships and instead learn non-attachment so the capacity to love someone but not need to control them or not need to obsess over them and it's also the capacity to overcome things like resentment jealousy and um, dependency in relationships and instead learn to sacrifice that so if for whatever reason we have unresolved grief around certain issues or unresolved sorrows it's understand that we need to go through those emotions we can't just bury them because it's on the other the renewal lies on the other side of them it doesn't mean that we wallow it just means that we honor those emotions we honor the natural grieving process it's through going through this different stages of grief that we reach acceptance and acceptance is what allows us to truly forgive, to truly move on and allow that renewing energy to fill our lives, to heal us, to transform us and allow us to engage in relationships with other people, nurture other people in a more loving, compassionate and detached way. So our well-being is not tied up with the other person. We have the capacity to love and nurture ourselves no matter um, the nature of the people around us and it's connecting with that universal nurturing energy that can heal us transform us allow us to break free of um, any old griefs any old relationships that are stagnant and need to be let go of and to let go of any possessiveness whether it be over relationships whether it be over children if it um, happens to be parents whether it be over creative projects that we've nurtured and they've reached their completion we now need to let go of them rather than holding on to them and it's learning to break free of possessiveness and learn how to share our resources share our nurturing capacity and to rather than hoard it or focus it on specific on just a small number of people it's the ability to open up and share nurturing more readily and the capacity to then spread that to or have that love for the whole of humanity but if we don't have that for ourselves, we can't give it to other people. If we don't, we can't give other people what we don't have. So this is a time for us all to reflect on our belief systems, reflect on whether they allow us to feel nurtured, whether they encourage us to push our, bound, push our own personal horizons, to expand our physical, mental and spiritual horizons through 
the belief that um, everything can happen for a, this, you know, higher goods, that no matter what challenges we face, they will ultimately serve our growth, they will ultimately nurture the expression of our souls and our spirits. And it's that belief that no matter what happens, everything happens for a reason, everything can push us forward and drive, create that propulsion behind our um, journey into consciousness and journey, or well, that spiritual journey, and that um, ability to nurture ourselves fundamentally, to have that belief in ourselves, because when we believe in ourselves unconditionally, we keep pushing horizons and when we we understand what it means to believe in ourselves to believe in our capacities to grow to overcome any limiting beliefs like belief that we're stupid that we are not worthy enough of something or we have we don't believe that we have the right to pursue a path even though that path is right for who we are we have to overcome these limiting perceptions these limiting beliefs that stop us from seeing that actually we do deserve, uh, we do have that right to grow, we do have that right to pursue um, tasks that expand our consciousness, we do have that right to explore new ways of doing things that other people may not have tried before. It's not our place to stay small, to continue to do things to gain acceptance from other people. If we cannot accept ourselves, no amount of love and acceptance from other people will ever be enough. So we need to learn to believe that we are worthy of love and belonging, that we are worthy of growing, of pushing our limit, pushing our current boundaries of growth beyond and going beyond our comfort zone. And it's also learn to believe in other people in the same way. So the more we can use this retrograde over the next four months or so to break free of any beliefs that we don't um, deserve to grow, we don't we're not smart enough or we're um, not um, wise enough or not loving enough to do something. These are all beliefs that handicap our growth and we have to learn to overcome them, to embrace more empowering and life affirming beliefs about ourselves and to believe that everything in our lives does um, serve a high growth no matter how unpleasant a situation or experience may be everything has a potential to teach us something about ourselves and if we have this belief that everything will ultimately unfold for our higher growth and for a higher purpose then we stop seeing things from a victim mentality we stop seeing ourselves as being not good enough and instead we see that we have that potential to grow we have that potential to um, be, be become the best version of ourselves the most loving the most compassionate most empathetic and we also have that capacity to draw upon ourselves for um, love and nurturing and to rely upon ourselves to have that work ethic necessary so that we don't either burn out or drop out so it's also having that balance in life to recognize okay we want to work towards this but we also need to nurture ourselves through rest so that we need to burn out from overwork or drop out from a lack of work and if we believe that we have that capacity to enjoy life, to nurture ourselves, to do what is right for who we are and to nurture that capacity to expand our consciousness, to expand our levels of awareness and break free of kind of clannish perceptions or conditioned beliefs and instead embrace beliefs aligned with the natural truths, the natural laws and the understanding that every single one of us is worthy of love and belonging it's a conditioning um, on top that lies um, between who we see ourselves and who we really are that stops us and causes us to engage in more fearful dynamics but if we break free of these conditioning influences if we break free of any complexes around nurturing so learning to see that food is a form of nurturing um, we need to be able to love ourselves unconditionally because that fosters a strong sense of self-worth and self-love which then serves as the basis for us to more easily or successfully navigate complex one-on-one -on -one relationships and further break, push beyond that as well to the capacity to love humanity as a whole in no matter how, how much shadow we see in the world around us, if we can love ourselves and nurture ourselves unconditionally we can then radiate that to other people we move beyond judgment and self-rejection is self-acceptance allows us to 
render that nurturing capacity to other people. So it's moving beyond self-rejection to self-acceptance. It's about moving beyond conditional um, love and conditional relationships with food and a sense of belonging with other people to unconditional love and seeing that um, putting the right foods in our body is actually very nurturing. It enables us or empowers us to foster greater self-reliance and greater productivity in our lives. And it also allows us to let go of our creations, to share them with other people and to overcome any tendency to hold on to grief, to hold on to um, relationships that have died and stay stuck in grief. Instead, recognise that it's a holding path that doesn't serve us. I mean, to move through the stage of grief to the point of acceptance that allows us to liberate ourselves, to renew our minds through the shedding of old attachments and instead recognise that it's through, it's through less, the capacity to let go is directly proportional to our capacity to renew ourselves, to be reborn, more empowered, more loving, more compassionate and and more nurturing towards you know, people but also having that discerning quality to recognize when we need to break free of a pattern where we need to stop wasting time nurturing people that aren't that don't want to grow and recognize where that creates holding patterns in relationships and sometimes the most kind nurturing thing we can do is to let the other person go to break free and to become more uncon that unconditional nurturing sometimes mean, means we have to step away and to focus it on ourselves, to heal ourselves, to renew ourselves and focus on um, sharing that nurturing energy with people who are genuinely seeking um, personal growth, genuinely seeking empowerment and wish to move beyond the limitations of their mind, to move beyond the conditioning of their past and to heal themselves and renew themselves it's sharing that nurturing energy with the people who seek it for the to in order to grow transform and to join the same capacity to love and nurture so it's having that discerning element as well of recognizing when we need to break free of old relationship dynamics allow them to die and um, set the other person free so we're not enabling them to remain in toxic relationships so it's nurturing ourselves enough to break through um, relationships is also loving the other person enough to let them go so they they can learn the key lessons necessary for them to transform their own lives rather than being stuck in a smothering pattern because we're so used to trying to nurture the people that we drain ourselves and we don't allow that person to make the mistakes that they need to you know, go through in order to learn core lessons that empowers them going forward so there's an awful lot to get um, to cover there and so I hope it's not too much to take on board and I hope it's a useful guide. The main thing to remember is this is a time to go inwards to look at, evaluate our um, belief patterns and observe their impacts and see do they nurture us or do they hold us back? Do they foster the capacity to grow and transform or do they keep us in a holding pattern that prevent us from moving on, prevent us from being able to heal ourselves and prevents the rebirth and renewal energy from making its presence known in our lives so we can break free of the past, break free of the um, conditioning influences from the past and move beyond the conditional love um, for self and other and move towards unconditional love for self and other through healing the various complexes we may hold on, may, may be holding on to and to enable us to believe in ourselves, to believe that we have the capacity to grow, to expand our physical, mental, spiritual horizons, and to allow consciousness to guide us forward through the expansion of the minds, the expansion of awareness, and prov providing that energetic presence that encourages other people to do it. So we nurture people through the quality of the energy flowing from us, rather than telling them what to believe or just telling them information it's embodying that nurturing energy it's embodying that capacity to help other people to expand their minds and to believe that their, their lives have a purpose of some kind and to believe that consciousness will drive them forward and teach them that life is not meaningless there is an underlying meaning to everything and everything serves a higher growth if we're prepared to see the lessons in it and to find the truth 
that we're supposed to be learning at this time in order to break through the past and to renew our lives and to go through the necessary rebirth that um, precedes renewal. So may Sarah's retrograde bring you many new insights and significant healing um, in your life. May it allow you may it bring you the lessons that enable you to nurture yourself and foster that self-reliance and that capacity to love ourselves to the point where we can love other people unconditionally rather than it being through the conditional lenses that we learn in childhood if we can overcome that child conditioning and empower ourselves through new beliefs that allow us to express who we are that believe that we have that capacity to go on that journey to grow and transform and there is so much healing that we can achieve through this particular retrograde. There's so much expansion of awareness that we can achieve. And there is so much um, healing around nurturing that we can achieve during this retrograde. So may series, series retrograde be much illumination, transformation and healing. Take care and be blessed.